Hi handsome and welcome to my 32nd video. Today I have a yet another discussion video for you, although I'm pretty sure that this one won't be as divisive as my last one. Let's discuss the Dekia zone in Black Desert Online. While there are many criticisms laid at the Dekia zone, some of which I would even agree with, the one that is said the most often is one that simply does not make sense to me. And it's none other than the claim that Dekia is just recycled content. Now, let's clear some things first. Every MMO recycles content one way or another. And funnily enough, in every MMO, you will find people complaining about the recycled content. Even many other games outside of the MMO genre do this. I don't even need to dig that deep for examples, because all you need to do is look at Elden Ring and you will see many people complaining about the copy-pasted bosses all throughout the game. Let's face it, reusing assets and models is a completely normal part of game development, as the devs don't have to worry about making entirely new models and animations for every single enemy in the game. This shortens the development time tremendously and allows developers to focus on other things in the game and things that probably matter a little bit more than just enemy variety. So what are the assets that are reused in the Kia zones? Well, it's obviously the models and the animations of the mobs, but also the locations of these zones and the assets associated with those zones. So the only work necessary is changing numbers adjusting some variables and loot, and adding new mechanics, which we will use as a segue into the next point. Because just pointing at other games and saying that they do this is not enough. So let's talk about the zones themselves. Like I said, the mechanics of these zones are different from the original zone. Sulfur has the floor is lava mechanic, Histria has the statues that shoot at you, Akman has the falling uh, and exploding debris, as well as the big boss that spawns every now and then. None of these exist in their original zones, and we could list this for every zone that has a Dekia lantern spot. So, yes, the mobs themselves look the same, but they behave differently. Also, just by being tower spots with constantly respawning monsters, these spots they become different mechanically just by default. I think we can all agree that stars and pillars is not the same spot as the regular stars end, even if they use the same assets. So why should we act like Dekia is the same as non-Dekia? Alright, so now that we know that reusing assets is basically industry standard, and that it's not just a full on copy and paste with Dekia in the first place, let's also have a look at which spots the Dekia zones are appearing in, so that we have full context and can explain their placements. As of writing this, we have 10 Dekia spots in the game, those being Ash Forest, Olon's Valley, Tunkuta, or if you prefer Turos, Thornroot Forest, Histria Ruins, Akman Temple, Cyclops Land, Pilaku Jail, Road Sulfur Mine, and Crescent Shrine. There are also three zones coming into the game in the immediate future. I am writing this on Wednesday, so probably tomorrow. These are Kedri Ruins, Mirumuk Ruins, and Giffin Rassia Temple, which you probably know as Giffin Upper or Gaifin Upper, if you want that pronunciation. I think it's very important to understand and underline why I think we are getting these zones specifically. So let's get into this. I start from the easiest zone to explain and go up from there. That means we first talk about Dekia Cyclops. This might as well be a new zone, since the original is so outdated to the point where it's not even listed in the Monster Zones info tab. I don't think anyone is upset about this one. Next, we have the four Valencia treasure spots. Here we got an explanation from Pearl Abyss themselves, and that is that they didn't want people who are after the set treasure items to feel like their time is being wasted and they wanted to bring the silver per hour up for them specifically. I am sure that everyone who wants the map or the compass is happier making 1 billion an hour instead of 300 mil an hour. Thornwood Forest, Crescent Shrine and the future Kedri Ruins fall under the same category and the same assumed reason why these zones got Dekia, and it's kind of self-explanatory, I think. These zones are that content. Sure, you will have a small handful of people going to these spots for an hour or two every once in a blue moon, 
but for the vast majority of players, these zones might as well not exist. Dekia in these spots serves less of a recycling bin to just copy paste the mobs, but more of a way to breathe new life into these forgotten places on the map so that people have a reason to actually go there. Next up we have the group spots, but I think this is also kind of self-explanatory. These endgame group spots are exactly what people have been asking for for the longest of times in BDO. Duros is for you and your friend, Olens and later Mirumok is for you and two of your friends, and then the upcoming Gaifin Upper is for a full party of friends. Or just random people since, I mean, this is BDO after all, we don't have friends, right? So I think this is just a way to give us endgame group grinding spots. Which leaves us with a single zone, Ash Forest. This one is the hardest one to explain because I think that the reason for its existence is tied to the specific item that it drops. My guess is that they wanted to give players more ways of obtaining the Debo necklaces, but more in the sense that they wanted to increase the number of them on the central market rather than to improve one's own character. Looking at the other spots that are released alongside Ash Forest and their drops does support this theory at least a little bit. Cyclops drop Dawn Earrings, which could only be obtained from abandoned monastery at the time. Thornwood Forest gives Ominous Rings, which you could only get from the regular Thornwood Forest with an abysmal drop rate. And Dekia Olands drop Debo Earrings, which at the time could only be obtained through boss blitz in Land of the Morning Light. Some of these items, arguably, are used to boost one's character, but at the same time, the people grinding these spots will most likely already have these items, or were at least very close to having them. So there are all the Dekia spots that we have in the game right now, and if you have any other ideas why these spots specifically got their Dekia zones, Feel free to leave that in the comments, I am very interested in your own ideas and opinions. Next point that I want to talk about briefly is that the Dekia spots are tower spots. Here I think it really depends on your preference for grind spots. Personally, I like tower spots more than the regular run in circle spots. I also like them much more than the smaller circles with fewer more powerful monsters such as DSR or Elvia trolls. That being said, I was really curious about the frequency of Dekia spots compared to the other spots in the same AP and DP requirements, so I looked at all of the grind spots in the game that are around Dekia requirements and divided them into tower spots, big monster circle spots and small monster circle spots. You will notice that there are two tables, and this is because I made one table for just the zones that drop the forgotten Limbo seal that you need for the Limbo to get the Deboreka rings, and another one for all of the zones that are 300 AP or above, which is when Dekia starts appearing. There is one more thing that I need to talk about, and that's Isdrahid Highlands, which is a tower spot, but is not a Dekia spot, so that's why you have one more tower spot than Dekia spot, okay, in the table. And well, I think I found what is basically the obvious answer to why some people dislike Dekia so much. There are simply too many Dekia zones compared to the non-Dekia ones. This problem gets even worse when you consider that this list doesn't include Dekia 2, and the Dekia 2 has no counterpart in terms of regular grind spots. Hopefully, this will get addressed by Pearlabist in the future, because at least to me, BDO is about player freedom, so taking it away and forcing everyone into the Dekia zones kind of goes against that. I honestly believe that this is the reason why Dekia is not liked as much anymore. It went from a handful of zones meant to provide options for people who didn't want to move between packs to the only option for any hyper endgame player. So it's not much as reused content as it is overused content in my opinion. But there is still one elephant in the room, and it's the Elvia zones. Elvia zones do the exact same thing as Dekia in terms of reusing NPC models and animations, yet nobody calls 
Elvia lazy. And many people nowadays still want Elvia to be continued in places like Medea. If anything, it just goes to prove how hypocritical some players are, and that's something that we can also see in people who in one breath say that video is nothing but running in circles and they want the game to do something new and exciting, but when video does something new and exciting in places like Land of the Morning Light 2, they turn around and say that it's dead content because it has no circles to run in. I've been trying to figure out why Elvia spots are generally liked and Dekia spots are generally disliked but my only idea is that Dekia is overused right now and that it is a tower spot. So if you have any other ideas, please do let me know, I am very curious to hear them. So now that we know what Dekia is and we have most likely concluded why it's disliked, even though it's more than just because it's recycled or copy pasted content, we should finish this video by talking about why Dekia exists in the first place. BDO is a 10 year old game and as any game that all, it has a lot of jank to it. A lot of elements that make the game worse to get into and harder to enjoy, especially for newer players. And as much as some people would like to say otherwise, a stable influx of new players is what keeps an MMO alive. If you remove the new player flow, you are effectively suffocating your game and you're just waiting for its inevitable death. Pearl Abyss know this better than anyone else. That's why they swapped focus towards new player acquisition lately. If you look at the changes made in the last couple of years, it is very obvious that there are four things that Pearl Abyss are working towards fixing that stop new players from getting into the game. These are open world pvp, the game being overwhelming and hard to get into, the grindiness of the game in general and the lack of group and endgame pve content. All four of these aspects are being addressed one way or another. You can look at basically any larger update and you will find a change that has to do with at least one of these four issues of the game. It is because of this focus on the new players that BDO doesn't just give us a new endgame grind zone every year, which is where Dekia comes in to fill the gap. Dekia has two roles that it needs to fill. It is there to revitalize the old zones as we talked about towards the start of this video. But it is also there to give veteran endgame players something to do and something to strive for. Without Dekia zones, we would have had maybe two other grind spots outside of Ulukita, based on their previous record, but thanks to Dekia, we now have 10, soon to be 13 spots to grind alongside Ulukita. Even if they are all tower spots, and even if all of them reuse assets, I think that is a price worth paying. But that is it for today, handsome. Let me know what you think, I hope you liked the video, I wanted to touch on another contemporary topic simply because I like the discussions that these topics bring, even if they can turn sour. That being said, next video will for sure be the life skill only Iron Man video, I did burn myself out heavily on that series and I do think that the idea of doing that instead of the Iron Pan was a stupid one. Which is why you haven't seen it in a month or so at this point. And for that I do apologize. There is a little bit too much of everything going on in my life right now and I am trying to balance YouTube with Twitch on top of it without YouTube becoming just a dumping ground for Twitch highlights. I will do my best for you guys. I know I don't say this enough here but I appreciate every single one of you and I thank you for giving me a platform that I can use to spread my opinions. Thank you guys for everything. Remember to like and subscribe, much love and enjoy your grind.